Hello everyone, this is Huff the Dragon with Design Visionaries and today I'd like to go over uh, the BIM uh, Building Information Modeler, I believe it's called and uh, yes, and uh, I wanted to kind of go over some of the cool features that you can use with this to demonstrate the uh, building if you're in a meeting or you want to uh, showcase it uh, you can bring it right into a game engine and do a little walkthrough. Uh, this also kind of brings on the question that uh, for game development, because I do that on the side, <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'm a dragon, um, that I do like to um, build buildings in 3D games. And a lot of the tools online uh, make it kind of hard. Uh, it's time consuming. And one thing I love about the BIM here is that it's another potential aspect for game developers uh, using CAD. I know some of us do use it for uh, building architecture for games and NX has a very, very lovely uh, application here that makes it very easy and quick to put together architecture. Um, as you can see, I have a building I kind of made really quickly um if i take out the floor for a second i just want to show you um i just kind of grabbed a plan online and i made a little raster image and drew over it um and scaled it to size uh, just just so i could kind of throw together something really quick but really all i did was you know i have the plan i just drew the curves and uh set up the levels and bam i had a building um in there uh, and the nice thing about the BIM is that there is a reuse library. So as you can see here, it's full of little different things I can, furnishings and whatnot I can throw in here. Um, there's doors and windows I can slap on. So if you go to the BIM design equipment, you'll see uh, several different things. And this is all part of your reuse library. So um, if you have your own custom windows and doors and whatnots, you can throw them in there to reuse um, in your building and you can just slap them in and and you know make them very customizable like uh, just just to kind of show you I can slap in a window and it will allow me to change you know the the sizes and stuff here it's basically a very smart uh, I think this is a product template wizard kind of uh, uh, or product template part where you bring it in, you get a nice little uh, UI and stuff to use, and then you can choose the sizes and stuff like that, and you can move it around and whatnot. So, you know, I, I need to have the window over here, constrain it, and it will chop through the wall. And all of this is retained in an assembly structure, which is really nice. And, you know, making architecture in other methods, it's always end up being like one part and then you have to separate it out and it's time consuming and blah 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 <laughs> um but this this actually uh this actually saves a lot of time you can get geometry done for architecture very quickly and it's all ready to go um and so that's kind of what i did here it didn't it didn't take me very long at all like you know maybe like 30 minutes or so to put this together um <clears throat> but what i importantly what i wanted to show you was um how you can use the buildings you create in this and, and demo them in a like Unity engine, for instance. Um, and one of the lovely things that uh, Siemens had added to NX uh, a while ago was the ability to export an OBJ file. Um, originally, I think it was part of the Realize Shape application, um, but now they've included the ability to export just regular facets, uh, which is what uh, the unit, uh, most game engines use are uh, meshes, not NURBS, uh, which is what CAD systems use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this part into Unity. Uh, and it's a really simple pipeline now. So I can, and so what I, I kind of did, I had to color up these, uh, the geometry. So one thing you want to keep in mind when you're exporting uh, geometry from NX uh, in the OBJ file is that if you want to um, paint these up in like Unity or Game Engine, you want like a different floor texture than the wall and the ceiling, um, you're going to need to basically um, c 
colorize them in the CAD and this will tell the OBJ export is, oh, this is a different mesh because it has a different material color on it. So it separates it out and allows you to um, paint it up differently. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Export, and I want to export my uh, geometry here into an OBJ. And yeah, the uh, geometry type is going to be faceted. They do have the subdivision cage for the realized shape aspect of NX. Um, and then the displayed part or existing part, I'm going to select, you know, the geometry here and for the file units, um, technically Unity's units are meters. Um, and I think this translates because right now I think I'm in inches. Um, and I might want to do that, but then I have to scale it in Unity um if i go meters i'm not entirely sure if it is um scaled properly so let's just go with something i know with right now um and so we'll do inches and then um i'm going to choose the file location so uh, i was just goofing off with this earlier and we'll go like we'll save this two hit okay and uh coordinate system so the, you might want to actually add a new coordinate system for this um with game engines generally the uh up axis is normally y and the floor axis is x and z so um i think the best workflow for this would probably to be create a new coordinate system where the y is up and the x and z is the floor and select that as your coordinate system if it allows you i didn't actually try that yet so but um, if it does that's great uh otherwise you know you can always just easily rotate it in unity it's not a problem uh and then i'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and get that to export and that takes a moment and while it's doing that i'm going to switch over to unity here we are and i kind of have this like street scene set up with a little uh first person player um, which I can, you know, walk around and stuff with, um, like so, so I can kind of just walk around and whatnot, just something simple. They have these on the asset store for free. You don't really have to program any of this stuff. You can just get it right off unity. I think there's free ones for just simple first person controller to just walk around and you could probably find a little street like this, like I did. Uh, I think this one was part of some free package or something. Um, came with like a little map or whatever. Uh, okay, it looks like this finished exporting. So um, basically the workflow for this is, or the pipeline to get it in is really, really simple. I mean, literally all I have to do is go to where I saved the file. Let's see, here we are. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just basically, I grab the OBJ file and I can simply just drag it into the uh, little asset explorer here at the bottom, like so, and just drop it in and it just imports it. So there it is. And you'll notice it looks sideways because that's just the uh, axis I was talking about. The Z and X are the floor where the Y is, you know, up. So, um, and then right here, there's a convert units. Um, and it's expecting a centimeter file usually um but i wasn't entirely sure if that you know scales properly so what i'm gonna do is i also want to fix one little thing uh when you're doing like geometry with like sharp corners you're gonna see like uh this smoothing thing happen on the roof and i don't really want that roof to be smooth because that's not how it normally looks so uh there is a smoothing source here we're just gonna say none and what that'll do, see now it's nice and jagged, if you can see that. Um, and I'm going to bring it in really quickly. So you can just go down here and I can just drag it into the scene. And that is like super massive, like so huge. So um, going from inches to centimeters, I think is what it's expecting. It's kind of big. So I'm going to do the typical scaling here. Uh, I think since it's centimeters, that might be the right. No, nope, I need to go down a lot more. I think it's zero to, let's see. That might be the right size. 
try that. Unless it's a little smaller now. Let me see. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so there's my building sticking halfway out of the ground. <laughs> All sideways. Now we're going to adjust where it's sitting. So we're going to go uh, rotate it on an X. There we are. And let's bring it over here real quick. There we are. Oop. Let me get over here so I can see it. All right. I'll put my building up by my guy here. A little camera down there is where my little dude is. And I'm going to be walking around in this. It looks like the floor is clipping through the ground. So I'm going to just bring it up a little bit. There we go. And if I go inside, it's very, very dark in here. So I want to um, make a light. So I'm going to go and put light right here. I'm going to do point light. And I'm actually going to drag it under my building like so. And then I can zero out the coordinates so that it's at the building's location. And then, and the nice thing about making the light um, a child of the building is if I have to move the building in the entity, the light will move with it. So I don't have to worry about repositioning any of that stuff. So let's put this in here like so. There we go. That's nice. And then I actually want to have um, some soft shadows. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe raise that up a little bit. And then um, I want to just kind of add a few more throughout this building so I can see what I'm doing. So I'll just duplicate these lights and move them around real quick. Duplicate. Let's bring them in here a little bit. Over here so I can see what's around this corner. <laughs> and you can change the light colors and the radiuses and all that stuff too. So if you want like more warm lighting for like the inside of a house, it's not hard to do. Um, the color thing is like right over here. So I can make this one like kind of a warmer color by going to the color changer here and doing that. So like a soft warm light for this room and whatnot there we go and actually i want to duplicate that light and move it over into this room here so we can see what we're doing so this is that one room i i did make a room that i pulled in some furnishings um and that was another thing um just real quick i want to show you in nx uh i did cover was that uh, in our reuse library there is a Cadenas library and this actually pulls from a database online it has like I don't know some 50 or a 500,000 parts I don't remember the exact number uh, don't quote me on that uh, it is a lot though and there's lots of manufacturers that have stuff in here and um, you're pulling from an online database so and it does cache the stuff so when after you've grabbed it if you need to grab it again you don't have to uh, wait for it because sometimes when you click on these it, it hangs for a minute because it has to download from the cloud and everything um but yeah that's kind of what i did i just i pulled in a, a couch and a table and a tv so you, you can kind of furnish up the whole place um before you even bring it in which is really nice you can do almost all of it in nx and then you just bring it into you know the game engine and just put the lights in and whatnot you can texture it too um but uh, that one, I think you have to go into the actual model itself. Uh, doing it in the assembly, I believe it's still one texture. So um, we have to colorize it from within each subcomponent. Otherwise, it just brings it in with the same material. <clears throat> but for now, I mean, I, I've got some of the light in. So let's go ahead and hit play. Well, actually, first, I just realized that this does not have a collider. So you're going to end up walking through the wall. So to fix that, you can actually go here and check, uh, where is it? Generate colliders right here. So you hit that and we'll hit apply. And so what that does is now it creates a mesh collider. Um, convex basically just makes it where it's solid. You can't walk in it, but we don't want that. So uh, now I should be able to walk through, walk in to here and, and stop on the walls and stuff. Um, but my camera is probably set to, um, clip through it. So, uh, you may have to change the clipping plans here to a little bit smaller value. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hit play and see how that looks. 
there we are oh look at that i'm walking around so here's our building from nx right into unity look at that yeah yeah that wasn't hard and i do have stairs here which i can go up but i didn't make it upstairs <laughs> it's just a wall it goes nowhere all right so <laughs> um pretty nice you know and then i'm gonna go over here where i put that couch which i think oh i gotta go around so that's another thing when you have doors um there's a way to animate these in unity um but you have to do a special thing so they come in as a separate mesh and then you can animate the mesh and make it close and open or add physics or whatever um but we're just trying to keep it short so i just want to show you so here's the uh the tv and the table and the couch so i can chill here watch tv you do like a little virtual thing um and i know nx has a has a vr kind of uh thing built into it but um uh, you can also do it through this as well um setting up vr and unity is actually relatively easy as well um, if you do want to demo it with this instead um, because maybe you might want to have several buildings and you know they're all separate files and you just export them and put them all in this map and you and your friends can go walk around and check them all out so yeah pretty cool stuff and this is pretty cool for game development too because uh, that sure shortens up the the time it takes to make architecture using the bim and i'm really hoping that you know maybe in the future we might see more of this being used in the uh, game development sector uh anyway uh if you like this video please check us out on youtube under design visionaries you can give us a like and follow you can also check out our website designvisionaries.com and i uh, hope you enjoyed this thanks bye